So I'm just going to talk about charging curves um, right now. So if you can see my charging plan for tonight, you can see that the charge goes up straight and then is flat at the top. Um, so if I zoom in a bit on it on my chart here, you can see that it's this up and then a flat line. Now, some batteries work like that, but a lot of them don't because the battery gets full, it takes longer to charge. So if you look in the file editor and you look at the configuration file, there's something in here called a charging curve. There is a default charging curve here you can enable, which was taken from a give energy 9.5 kilowatt hour battery. There is also a new feature that allow PrevBat to calculate it for you. So what happens is when it, if your charging turb is turned off, commented out, then when it starts up, it will actually try and calculate the charge curve and that will be stored in the log. So as long as you've got your logs actually turned on and saved, so mine saved as prevbat.log, but you can configure that in appdaemon.yaml. Then if you have a look in the log file, you should be able to find when it last started up. And if you haven't done that recently, then just hit restart. And what you'll see here is it'll try and find a charge curve. It'll mention the sensors it uses. If you don't have history in those sensors, it's not going to work. And you'll get a warning there. And it'll say which data points it's found, how long it took to go between those data points and the average power. And then it'll write out a charging curve. If you take this charging curve here, it won't include all the points because when it gets to 1.0 full power, it's not going to list it. And you copy that and you go into your apps.yaml and you find your charging curve, then um, you should just be able to paste this into here. In fact, the one that was in here was the one I generated earlier. But, yeah. and you might be surprised to see how slow it charges. That's 15% of maximum rate of the highest SOCs. Now what you'll see when you go back and your plan refreshes is that you've got um, a curve at the top here. And if I zoom in on, on that a bit, um, sorry, on my charts tab, um, then you can see it's curved up and it takes longer to charge. Now this will be more accurate in terms of predicting when the charge will finish. In this case, it probably doesn't matter because I've got plenty of time to finish charging. But if I was going to actually add some discharge and all the shots, slots were smaller, it would matter. Another feature that we have here is something called low power mode. If you turn on low power mode, and I generally recommend this if you've got larger charging slots, then after the plan is made, that will scale back the charging power so that the, it charges at the minimum power to reach the target charge in the duration. So if I just pause this second while the plan updates, what you see now is that the charge is due to complete just at the end of the, the window. So if you look at the plan now, you can see it's just going to complete on time. This would obviously give me no spare time for discharges, but if there were discharges in there, it wouldn't necessarily um, charge so slowly. What will happen is the charge rate will dynamically get adjusted to meet this target. But if you've not checked your charge curve correctly, you're going to get caught out because it will think it's linear and then you'll run out of time right at the end and it might not finish charging on time. So I only use that feature if you set the charge curve properly. Um, some people like it because it would supposedly kinder on the batteries and maybe reduces some hum noises and that sort of thing. I don't know if it's better or, or not, but maybe the Give Energy folks think it is. Um, Anyway, I hope you find those uh, useful features and uh, thanks for watching. Bye now.